Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're testing the most powerful graphics card or so this text would have you believe. What is it then? A 4090? 7900 XTX? Of course not. What we have here is the 3 gig 1060 and I'm pretty sure it's never been the most powerful graphics card even when new. Bit of an odd choice of marketing slogan here but nonetheless there is a serious point to this video. It's been almost a year since we last looked at the cut down 1060 and in that time games seem to have gotten a lot more demanding or in some cases unoptimized. The ever decreasing price of one of these means that for older or less intensive titles it's really not a bad choice. We still have game ready driver support and some of the most popular games out right now will run very well provided you manage your expectations. Let's see how it copes under some real pressure though. Cyberpunk is a couple of years old but it still gets updates and is still pretty demanding. Surprisingly we didn't need upscaling to enjoy it on the 1060 though at the low settings with an average of over 40 fps along with some respectable percentile figures. If we want to aim for 60 then we'll need the FSR balanced preset. Things look a little blurrier but we did average 61 and once again the 3 gig 1060 did better than I anticipated. Starfield is a bit of a mess performance wise we couldn't even get 30 fps at the low settings and upscaling didn't help whether it was CAS or FSR 3. Dropping the native resolution didn't do much either so we're probably running into a VRAM limitation here. Baldur's Gate 3 needs no upscaling to be enjoyable, this one runs at close to 60fps with 1080p low. A lot of the time it is about managing expectations with older cards like this. Enabling FSR 2.2 of course will mean a noticeable improvement however with increased 1 and 0.1% low figures too, making for a more consistent gameplay experience. Power World up next, I do see the occasional stutter with this game regardless of hardware but at 1080p low with TAA 60fps wasn't a problem. The 0.1% low does leave a little to be desired but all in all I was expecting worse, so not bad at all. Dragon's Dogma 2 up next with the lowest settings and the interlaced rendering mode which seems to give us a few more frames on average. It's going to take more than a few frames however to make this playable and unfortunately this wasn't helped with upscaling or by by dropping the native res, just like in Starfield. Perhaps the card is once again the victim of its 3GB VRAM limitation here. Hogwarts Legacy started off with a slightly higher average frame rate but performance seemed to drop a little as all the textures finished loading in. We still saw at least 50 FPS though along with pretty decent percentile lows. We have FSR 1 or 2 to choose from but FSR 2 will give us a much better final image and still meant at least 60 fps overall, a very nice 69 to be precise. Assassin's Creed Mirage with, you guessed it, 1080p low and TAA. Not quite 60 fps but the game still looks good in my opinion and is fairly consistent. If we want to push through that 60 fps barrier then we will need help from FSR once again. Quite often though the quality or balanced options are fine. Quality in this case did mean 68 FPS with some slight percentile improvements. Finally it's Alan Wake 2 and oh boy why did I bother. A whopping 16 frames per second at native resolution with the lowest in-game settings. It seems like some of the textures are yet to appear uh, but I have been waiting a while and they're still not loaded in so maybe they just won't. For this one we need a much more aggressive FSR preset to try and get it playable but actually ultra performance mode which renders the game at about 360p did make that happen. Now it does look like Vaseline has been smeared on the screen but at least we were finally getting 30 fps most of the time. But there we go a brief look at what the so-called most powerful graphics card can do in 2024. I might start to benchmark new releases as they come out with one of these to see how it holds up because the cutdown 1060 has always been the subject of scrutiny and debate so I think it'll be pretty interesting to see how it holds up with future AAA releases that come out across this and next year. GTA 6 on 3 gigs of VRAM anyone? Well, we'll find out at some point I'm sure. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.